Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're covering the Mutant. So the Mutant is I think a character that is a lot of people's last character that they managed to finish Danger 5 with. It's one that a lot of people are stuck on and I think I can help with that. It's generally considered one of the worst characters in the game, but I think you should be able to win with it fairly consistently. Here's how it works. So the Mutant you get plus 200% XP gain, so you get triple the levels and you get and your items cost 50% more. So right away what that tells us is we're going to be getting most of our stats from item, from, from levels and very few of our stats from weapons. A sort of hidden cost of this, of course, is that it's really hard to roll for weapons, specific weapon, like any specific weapon, because the high price of weapons in the first two shops means that you are much less likely to be able to roll into four or five of them and get your weapon set up complete in the early game. To make that work, the weapon that we're going to use is one that doesn't rely on getting specifically more copies of that weapon, so we're going to go for a gun build. I think there's a couple reasons that this is good, but the primary one is just that we can pick pretty much any ranged weapons to go along with the shotgun, which is uh, the gun that we're going to start with, and do pretty well. We don't have to find specifically more shotguns. Any guns or any, in fact, pretty much any ranged weapons will help us with this, uh, with this weapon build. Something to keep in mind when you are generating triple levels is that you're going to get a max HP from every level up. So we actually generate a ton of our maximum HP just from levels and don't need to prioritize it as heavily since we're going to be level like 40 or 50 by the end of the game and that's 40 or 50 max HP just by itself. The other trick to this character, and one that I think is really important to know, is that luck increases the quality of your level ups and harvesting gives you XP. So as you are leveling, especially in the early game, we're going to be hard rolling for luck and harvesting to get our character started. So I picked some luck and that actually let us roll a level two upgrade in the shop and we actually got super lucky and it was harvesting. So this harvesting is going to be 24 XP per level because our levels are tripled. Here I'm going to take a, another shotgun and I'm just going to roll for more shotguns and SMGs great items to find. We're not going to worry about weird food, even though I think it's a really good item. Actually, scratch that. I am going to buy Lock the Weird Food um, because I think it's a really good item, and I will also talk about some additional shop mechanics when we get back to the shop, but let's get into the next game here. Wave here. So because we have... Eight harvesting already, we're getting 24 XP from that at the end of this wave, and as our harvesting increases, it's going to increase our level up significantly. Again, at the end of this wave, I'm going to be hard rolling for more luck and more harvesting. So we didn't find any level 2 upgrades, and we didn't find any luck or harvesting, so we're rolling. Still nothing, I'll roll once more. Wow, still nothing, that is really unlucky. I am going to roll once more. All right. It's starting to get really expensive, so I'll buy the ranged damage, and then here, because it's still really expensive, I'll buy attack speed. And then more flat damage is pretty good, but I was really hoping to find a little more luck or harvesting. We got a little unlucky there, but we can still make it work. Let us buy this double barrel shotgun, and then roll again. Just look to lock in any ranged weapon here. That's great. So now we've got five guns locked, because we can use any weapons, basically. So aside from that, that little hiccup, it's still worth doing. And uh, I mentioned that I, I was going to come back to a shop mechanic. So you saw there that when we locked an item, it keeps the price. So with our items going up in price every level, you really want to lock items very aggressively on this character because that's going to make the price increase less impactful overall. We've got two more levels, and we are going to grab a little more luck. And I'm going to roll this once to see if we can get some luck or harvesting. Yep, we'll take even the level one luck is still really good. It's going to make our future level ups much better. Grab two weapons here and roll once more, just looking for a weapon. Nothing. I will roll again, see if we get 
something that we want. I particularly want SMGs or shotguns, mostly. I will lock in this medical turret, though. I think that that's uh, going to help us a ton with our healing. Before we get our lifesteal built up, we're obviously going lifesteal because we're a ranged attacker and using SMGs and shotguns. I could have locked and bought that laser gun that we saw, but I think laser gun is just kind of a weak gun overall. So without any sort of increase to our damage from this character's kit, I think we're better off going for the best two guns, the SMG and the shotgun. All right, we got a box. This is great. Just a little more harvesting is nice and we'll be okay with losing some range damage. And here we're starting to see level three weapons, three things show up because of the increased luck. I will take this lifesteal. Lifesteal is really important and we're gonna take this level three attack speed as well. Scar is another item that's worth mentioning on this character. It doesn't stack the way you want it to. So this would increase our XP gain from 200% to 220%, not to, uh, whatever that would be, 240% or 360%. So it doesn't multiply with itself, unfortunately. So this item is actually pretty inefficient for our character. I'm going to buy the medical turret. We'll leave the weird food locked. I'm going to roll once more looking for one of these. That's perfect. And I will lock in some more luck because, like I said, we really want to increase our luck to have our level up options be higher level. You can see that we're already at 20 maximum HP without having bought any maximum HP by wave 5. So we're going to need to pick up a little bit at some point, but we can wait until we get higher tier versions of that. If we get like the level 3 or 4 maximum HP level ups, then those can fix our max HP all by themselves. So we never need to spend like early level ups on maximum HP the way some other characters might. Our wave clear and damage are actually going to be pretty good because we're going to be able to start picking up additional range damage. Flat ranged damage is actually easiest to get from level ups overall, so that's one reason that ranged builds work so well for this character. Here I am just going to take the 3% lifesteal and then I would love to take some range damage, but increasing our harvesting more will get our economy going so much faster, so I'm going to do that. Here we're just going to buy these. And I'm going to roll once looking for, yep, more shotguns. That's great. Pretty much the only thing we like need to buy in the shops is just leveled up weapons. And obviously any economy items we see are going to be nice. And any S tier items. So if you have watched my item tier lists, then you'll know which items to look out for. And if you haven't, you should because there's a ton of cool information in those. And then, of course, anything like piercing shots, baby with a beard, ricocheting shots, because we're a ranged build, those are the most important things we could find. But for the most part, stats are just going to come from level up, so we don't really need to worry about buying stats in the shops. Here I will... I will take 8% dodge, that's fine, and so you can see we're starting to get level 3 health showing up. I still don't need it yet, we're going to go with more harvesting first, and 25 luck is enough that I don't need to take a level 1 luck over a level 2 attack speed, so we'll grab this. I'm going to start combining and grab an SMG and another shotgun, level 2 shotgun. We'll roll again, and we've got up to 3 level 2 shotguns, which is great. Let's go to wave 7. The key is mostly that we want all of our weapons to level 2. Anything above that is a luxury, but Level 2 weapons are so much better than level 1 weapons that it's really worth getting all your weapons to level 2. Here, as always with a character that has decent damage output at this stage, we want to let the eggs hatch because it's worth more money that way. And on most ranged builds, especially if you have an SMG or a shotgun in your build, you should be able to clear the large aliens with no problem. Luck, of course, also has the additional benefit of getting us additional extra crates. And since items are so expensive, crates are one of our best ways to find key items for the build. Like piercing shots, for example. Or also stuff like weird food that can be a huge component of our healing. 
Here I could start boosting my life steal to our, the sort of 10% mark that we want to hit, but actually I think the best thing for us right now is just going to be the percentage damage, because ours is currently negative. Really want to get that up to positive. And here I'm going to grab 10 harvesting, that gets us over the 40 mark, which makes our harvesting go up by 2 per level. Uh, really nice to hit that, and then at this point we can stop like hard rolling for harvesting, it'll mostly take care of itself from now on. Continue to upgrade our guns, and roll here. Uh, Peacock, for the same reason as Scar, not very good. We're gonna... I'm considering buying the Weird Ghost here, and I think I will. It's still a pretty efficient way to get three maximum health, and we've got six lifesteal, so we should be okay. I'm gonna buy the Gentle Alien as well, and lock in the Mouse. That will get our lifesteal up to the number that we want, and even though we lose a little harvesting, extra enemies is always good. So great find for us here. I'm not going to bother getting the pistol, I'd rather just hold out for level 2 SMGs and so on. Because we have a medical turret and decent lifesteal, we're pretty safe to pick up the, the weird ghost this level. Already back to a decent health total. It did cost me a few materials, just because I had to run away from the first set of enemies, which meant, meant fewer enemies spawned in the first 4 or 5 seconds of the wave, but... Still worth it, I think, just for the maximum HP. And if we pick it up sort of incidentally like that, then that lets us spend our valuable level up items on something else. Have pretty good wave clear for this point. The main thing that we're missing is Obviously, just like any more damage is always good, but piercing shots would be the best thing we could find here. I'll take some attack speed, and I'll just take three flat ranged damage. That's great. That's so good with SMGs, it's going to really boost our damage overall. I am going to level the SMG and buy the shotgun, and then buy the mouse. Roll once looking for more weapons, primarily. So that's ideal here. Again, we want to lock stuff, so like locking stuff is inherently good for this character because of how much the cost of items goes up every level. So I'm looking at this duct tape here because our armor is negative. I think I will buy it. It's a pretty inefficient way to get one armor, um, but because our armor is currently negative, I think it's really important to boost that a little bit. So we're not just getting one shot when we get to the elite. Our elite is showing up on level 12, which is a little easier than level 11, typically. Um, one piece of general advice I can give you is if you're really struggling for a with a character, re-roll your waves until you don't get a level 11 elite. That, I think, is the most likely thing to end your run on for most characters, because some elites can just be really difficult, and because level 11 introduces the very high health ribcage aliens, they tank for the elite, which makes it pretty hard to burst down if it shows up on level 11, and your build is less likely to be to have really come together by that point. No shame in re-rolling to just look for a wave setup that doesn't have that, especially if there's a character that you're kind of struggling with. Gonna grab some more ranged damage, and here we are. I'm considering luck, I'm considering max HP, we have 11% lifesteal, so I'm okay there. I think I'm actually going to get this crit chance, just because it's level 3. And here we get 3 armor as well. That's great. That being the case, I might actually not want to buy this duct tape. And in fact, I think I will not. We're going to get this, though. Now that our armor is over positive, I, I don't really need to spend 80 on one armor. Recycling machine is kind of interesting for this character as well, because... We have built up our luck a little bit, but it's going to take it longer to pay off. I think overall it's not worth buying on this character usually, just because it's going to take longer for it to pay for itself and the materials are less valuable. Basically, you can think of items costing 50% more as materials being worth 33% less. So, recycling machine takes longer to pay off and also is, is worth less for this character overall. 
Whetstone, great item, obviously incredibly good. We're going to grab the shotgun and the whetstone, and we'll roll again, and we get to level this SMG. <laughs> Handcuffs would be really nice still, but I don't think we can afford to buy it with only 35 max HP. I could lock it and just give up a shop slot for several levels. I don't think that's worth doing. On the other hand, I will lock in these two and go to wave 10. Now I am going to prioritize getting at least one level 2 or 3 maximum HP increase. Just getting that above 40 is really nice before our first elite. I'd like to have probably around 60 going into wave 12, So, but we have been a little shy on finding it. On the other hand, our healing is pretty good with 11% lifesteal and our damage is not terrible. Percentage damage and maximum HP are the two stats that I think we're missing the most of right now. Got two levels from there as well, so yeah, I'll just take that max HP, and here, I wouldn't mind some more harvesting, but I think I am going to reroll. We're looking for percent damage, and we're looking for max HP. I will take three flat ranged damage, though. I think that's too important to pass up, and I'll grab some speed and some dodge and roll again. We're just looking for leveled up weapons and so on. 46 HP, so we should pretty easily hit around 50-ish by our first elite. If I manage to get a level up that includes max HP, I'll probably take it, but I would also just take more percent damage and so on. Because we found those wings, we don't really need to spend anything on speed and can even afford to take speed reducing items. What boss we get is going to, what elite we get is going to determine our strategy a little bit, depending on whether it's one that's relatively easy to deal with with a ranged build or one that we're going to struggle with. Because we have no pierce, some of the summoner enemies could be a little more difficult for us. But overall, I'm feeling pretty confident going into this elite wave. See, our harvesting is at plus 50, which is a little low at this point, but not terrible. I'm going to reroll this. I, I don't mind a level 2 crit chance, but I think we can do better. Um, level 3 attack speed is perfect. And then here, I will actually just take the level 2 maximum HP. With 15% lifesteal, we don't really need more. Let me continue to level up some submachine guns. Roll again. Glass cannon, that's interesting. We really need percentage damage, but going down to minus two armor is quite painful going into an elite wave. I think it's worth it, but this could be quite risky. And I'm again going to lock a duct tape. Not going to lock the dangerous bunny, even though normally I would buy this on just about every character, but it costs so much more for this character. And we're rerolling less just because we're buying less stuff. All right. This elite should be relatively clean for a ranged build. You just move in this kind of square or triangle. Like basically, see my movements are describing a triangle as it is charging past me, and then we we focus on it. And there you go. As long as you have a decent amount of damage, you should be able to get that one without taking too many hits. Much harder for a melee build because you don't get to focus it as it charges past you. You have to actually follow it, which makes it much more difficult for melee builds to clear the crocodile. That glass cannon really proved its worth there as well. I don't, I think if we hadn't had that damage, it would have been much more difficult to clear that elite. I want to make my way into the center to pick up all those materials before the end of the wave. All right, not the best item we could have gotten, but 20 luck is 20 luck, I suppose. Um, 
I'm going to recycle the peacock, even though we do want XP. Um, we already have a huge amount of XP gain, and peacock is so dangerous that I think you should basically never pick this item. Here, flat ranged damage or harvesting. I think we're late enough that I just want some ranged damage. Harvesting is, is really good and still probably worth taking at this point, but overall I think we're late enough in the in the wave that taking that over four flat ranged damage would be a mistake. Exoskeleton is going to fix all of our problems, basically, especially in combination with this butterfly, because we're going to keep 15% lifesteal. And then I'm going to still buy this duct tape, even though it decreases our max HP, just because I do really want to raise my armor to around 10 or so is typically a good value. Fairy is an item that I usually think is extremely good for most characters, but is worse for this character just because we're going to have so many fewer items. Do I want to lock the Ugly Tooth? It can be good against some elites. I think it's not worth locking, although I would probably buy it if it showed up again in the shop. But really at this point I want to save my shop reroll slots for finding any form of piercing or ricochet. That's going to be the thing that matters the most. And of course leveled up weapons are still good. As always with an SMG build, you want to be really careful with these floaty enemies because every time you hit them, they spawn a projectile. It's more important in the earlier game when you're likely not going to be killing them as quickly, but still worth keeping an eye on those guys in later waves because as, as they start to build up in number, they can become quite dangerous. And then we also have the tentacles in this wave, which tank tons of shots, especially from low damage instances like our shotguns and SMGs, so some types of enemies can end up building up a lot here. I'll grab some crit chance. Increasing our, our crit chance is going to be one easy way to increase our damage, and I'll take this attack speed as well. Some more luck. It's expensive, but I think it's still worth buying at this point, and I'm going to roll. Percentage damage is great, we definitely want that, as is crit chance, even though it does decrease our percentage damage. Let me roll again. Oh, another mouse? Yes, don't mind if I do. Increasing our life still to 20% will make our healing really, really solid. And also, adding the 10% enemies after the horde wave is kind of nice, because this way we aren't going to be in danger of overwhelming ourselves in the horde wave. Bag, similarly, is going to be worse on this character than on other characters for the same reason as the recycling machine. Wave 14 horde can be quite difficult because it's got the spawners, the, the big slug aliens, and if you let too many of the little goobers spawn then they are going to really overwhelm you, and in combination with the horde you can sometimes end up with a lot of those circling around in places where you can't shoot them. So right now you can see we're, we're having a little trouble keeping the horde at bay, just because there's so many enemies on the field. But this is why we took shotguns over some other kinds of ranged weapons, because it really gives you a lot more AoE. And even without a piercing effect, we're still able to maintain a reasonable bubble of safety get over here where I can kill these trees, but I didn't manage it. Lots of materials on the ground, because I wasn't quite able to get in there and pick them up. Sure, I'll take a little max HP here, and 12 harvesting at wave 14, that's, that's tempting, but I should just take the max HP. Grab the mouse, and tardigrade kind of interesting here as well. It's not usually an amazing item, but... Because we only have 60 HP, it might be decent. I think we're going to skip it. We will buy the Peaceful Bee, though, because I, I wouldn't mind getting my dodge up. And I'm just going to keep rerolling for better weapons or, like I said, pierce. Metal Detector. So Metal Detector doubles the value of materials that you pick up, and that includes the XP. So it's a little better than other material increasing items, but still I don't think worth 165 on wave 14. On the other hand, a level 3 SMG, that'll be great. 
stick in the neighborhood when you kill the slugs, so you can kill their spawns before they get out of hand. Especially important on melee characters, you want to stand, like, right on them. We already have 66 maximum HP, so maybe, like, one more level up selection, plus just our natural HP from leveling up, because you get one every time you level. We'll put us to the 80 to 100 range, which is where I like to be by the end of Wave 20. You can certainly play Wave 20 with lower than that, but I have found that that's a good number to, good rule of thumb as a number to aim for, just makes it so that you aren't in any danger. <laughs> for some reason, I kept walking with that projectile instead of dodging it, that was funny. After I tanked a little bit too much damage here. Our armor is pretty bad, so I'm taking a lot more damage than... I would like. I can't remember if the... I should really remember if our next elite is the next wave. If it is, I don't want to take the bait here. So I'm going to, but it's possible that that was a mistake. Here, I'm going to re-roll this. Look for something a little bit better. Uh, we can do better than this. Come on. All right, fine. I'll take 3% lifesteal. And then here, I'm actually just going to take 4 armor. 4 range damage would also be incredibly good, but... Um, our armor is a real problem. All right, cool. So the elite was until wave 17, so didn't put myself in too much danger with that bait. The level four pistol. Do I want a level four pistol? So it's 97 damage every half a second. The double barrel shotgun is 80 damage every 0.8 of a second. So it's not even that much. It's not like clear to me that it's that much better than a level one shotgun. <laughs> the pistol. Pistol is a pretty bad weapon overall, so I'm going to skip out on that pistol. Vigilante ring is going to be worth wave 16, 17, 18, 19, 12 percent damage. I don't think that's worth 300 materials at this point, so I'm going to just roll past that. Sharp bullet, on the other hand, is great. That's what we've been kind of talking about needing for the whole game, and I will lock in this alloy. Even though we don't want to increase our damage, crit chance and some range damage is really nice. Yeah, so you can see we're taking 10 or 11 from those projectiles instead of the 17 we were last wave, just because I increased my armor a little bit. Much much more comfortable amount of incoming damage now. And with the pierce that we just added in, our wave clear is so much cleaner. Let's look how much faster all the enemies are dying. Have to hunt down the kind of brain bug aliens to stop too many buffs from going down. If too many enemies get buffed, you can get overwhelmed because they move faster, take more damage, deal more damage. All the things. There's a loot alien in there, but he's too surrounded by his buddies. I'm gonna recycle this, recycle this. Let's just continue to grab armor because it's the level 3 option, and I'll buy this. I would really like to upgrade this weapon a little bit, but I don't... Hmm. I said that, I'm not sure if it's worth going selling to just go to a level 2 shotgun. I think it probably isn't. Typically it's not worth giving up a whole weapon level just to like replace with a higher level. If that was a level 3 shotgun, I probably would. I could also just combine and then buy the level 2 shotgun, and I should just do that actually. But just combine and buy a level 2 shotgun, buy this, reroll. Sort of forgot that we could get to level 4 weapons. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll take another exoskeleton and butterfly shop. Do I want this propeller hat? I think it's late enough and our luck is good enough. I don't need that. So I'm just going to buy the butterfly and then go into this next wave. We'll lock the exoskeleton. See what elite we get. All right, this I think is the hardest elite for many builds. So... Hopefully we can make this work, just because it runs away from you and it summons. So you really need tons of wave clear in order to chase it down. You can definitely get overwhelmed, especially on these later waves when lots of high health enemies are spawning. 
So I'm gonna be a little careful with how we approach this one. I say as I immediately tank a ton of damage there. <laughs> Yeah, so unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to clear this elite. It's fast, and it likes to hide behind hordes of enemies. And because this is wave 17, and we don't have, like, Ricochet or a baby with a beard or something to really clear these guys out, we are just... There's too many ablative enemies between us and the thing. Our defensive stats really kept us alive there. I, I managed to walk into every shot there, but that's why we built them. I'll take some dodge, and here... I didn't actually gain enough money to buy the exoskeleton, which is a little sad, but I'll take a ranged damage. This I don't want, even though we're getting flat ranged damage, minus attack speed would be too much of a problem for us, so I'm just going to save my money for this exoskeleton, go to the next wave. It is really important, I think, to recognize which elites are beatable with your current configuration, like which are killable, and which ones are just going to be too much trouble. So, the only reason we lived through that wave is that I quickly identified that that elite is very difficult for ranged builds that don't have any form of additional firepower, like bouncing shots or ricocheting shots, and chose not to try to chase it down. Really want to hunt down all the goobers as they spawn. But I also want to kill these trees. <laughs> Definitely on the low side for damage at the end of this build. I think this, this mutant build has not come together quite as well as many do. But still feeling pretty good about where it ended up. I'm just going to take this dodge try to get that to a reasonable amount before we go into the final wave. Grab Exoskeleton, and we can combine and get this level 2 SMG. Reroll again. Pumpkin is still really good for us, because we have some Pierce, so that's great. And let's go to the next wave. And the reason that this build is a little weak on the weak side for a mutant build, I think, is mostly that we didn't find enough harvesting early. That re-rolling four times in the first wave without finding any harvesting set us behind on sort of the curve for where we want our economy to be. It's still pretty winnable with a, even a very weak build, though. As you can see, we're doing fine, but want to identify sort of where we struggled with this build and why it didn't come together quite as cleanly as some. On the other hand, the the nice news about that if you've been having some trouble with this character is that if we can win with this build on the weaker side, then if you get any sort of build that's like on curve for what you expect, you should do just fine. All right, let's recycle that. I'm going to just roll for more damage. Sure, crit chance is one of the ways we can increase our damage the most. And yeah, focus, 30% damage for minus 6% attack speed. I think that's probably the best we're going to do here in terms of increasing our damage. Oh, no, well, the silver bullet would have been better, but, you know, no way to know that that was coming. So this is... Our current build, we have 72 health and 23% lifesteal, so we should be okay against the, the bosses, but we might not quite have the damage to kill them both. We'll have to see. Play near the medical turret, of course, and when you have a choice, you want to focus the octopus head boss on just about every character, because it charges at you and has a, a harder pattern of attacks to dodge. So it's both easier to focus because it's closer and also more dangerous. Starting to have the enemies stack up a little here. And because our damage has been quite evenly split between the two bosses, we're ending up in a slightly riskier situation than I'd have liked, but we should still be just fine. But this just goes to show that with this build, 
even if things don't quite work out as you hope, you can still win pretty cleanly. So there you go. That's the mutant. As always, my friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, do please let me know in the comments. Um, you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. We do new videos every single day here on youtube.com slash cephalopocalypse. And I will catch you guys next time. Cheers, my friends. GG.